This is Todayzy, the guide to every printed gaming magazine available in the UK, at least as of summer 2020 when we produced this series. Across this series, we've looked at titles by big mega corporations, for kids, by smaller commercial entities, and the more savvy hobbyist operators. But here in the final episode, we'll round up the true niche often single person publishers, as well as one brand that's been around the world of retro games since we called them New Games. And in fact, let's start there. Fusion Retro Fusion as a brand name has been around forever. I even wrote for two of their former websites back in 2008 or so. They were even keepers of Eurogamer's retro section for a while shortly after that. But the current incarnation is probably the most successful. Fusion Retro Books are a prolific publisher of retro tomes, including annuals for Crash and Zap magazine, three decades after we lost the titles themselves to the death of the 8-bit era. The jewel for us, though, is Fusion Magazine, a roughly bi-monthly little tome about the same physical size as last week's Switch player. It also gets occasional themed bonus issues like these for the CPC and Spectrum, as well as an annual resulting in some sort of issue monthly. This is a good time to leap in. As of this week, they've launched a Switch player style Patreon. You can get the paper issue shipped to you, an expanded digital edition with video to keep you going in the meantime, and the PDF version for £5 a month. If you want digital only, you can have that for a rather bargainous £1.50 a month. If you keep a close eye on the site, you may even, as we did, be lucky enough to pick up issues signed by notable people, such as the Oliver Twins and Stu Cambridge, famous for being blown up early in everyone's cannon fodder playthrough. Stu officially approved of my box C64 on Twitter, so he's alright by us. Our reference issue is number 11, published around the start of the world going mad. For you retro scene people, you'll immediately recognise names from the contributors list, such as those Oliver Twins, as well as Octavius, Dave Perry, and Asobi Quang. Fusion, as you might guess from the missing word in the name, is not strictly a retro mag, although that's the majority of the content. The first review of this issue is Jedi Fallen Order, released in the tail end of last year. Fusion doesn't quite have the word density of something like Switch Player, but it's easy to read and well laid out. The three-page review would, it's fair to say, probably fit on two, but whether being as crowded as that is of benefit to the overall design would be debatable. Features this month include a feature on games with trains. It's a varied piece, taking in the train game and the awful Thomas the Tank Engine game, alongside solid all-time classics like Railroad Tycoon and Denture de Go, and then running slightly out of ideas and resorting to Half-Life and Uncharted 2. Not afraid to talk about old magazines, their regular featuring of cover art legend Oliver Frey this issue takes on a classic Zap issue from the brief time it was trying to be an Amiga magazine as well as a C64 one. It's an interesting little retrospective on designing a cover for a game about murder, while working around a huge title and tape, and not falling foul of the censors. Fusion is comfortable with its broad brief. A feature on the obscure vacuum fluorescent handheld the Galaxy Invader 1000 sits comfortably next to the memories of the founder of the Amiga demo group Anarchy, responsible for the Phantasmagoria demo you've been watching in the background of this section. And so it continues with a pleasant mix of retro reviews and features. Fusion has a knack of getting in touch with the people who are there, and many of them write for the magazine in some capacity. It's also not entirely a games magazine. Witness the feature on how and why plastic toys age, and how people try to prevent this. Fusion, obviously, is a magazine put together with love, and a creator with connections very gently making use of them to make a top quality product. It doesn't have the resources of a retro gamer, so it charts its own path, and especially at those digital prices, you'll be spending bugger all to read it. You should. At the time of writing, some of the issues are a single quid, and you tell me you're going to do anything better with £1 today. We've got one magazine left to look at in depth, but first a quick interval and a roundup of the other paper-based tomes I know about. 8-Bit Magazine somewhat plays fast and loose with our regular requirement, but covers the world of 8-Bit in both console and computer form. 
The magazine, strangely, is not available digitally, despite the first six being out of stock in print, so I don't have an issue for a deep dive. But right now, both their previous 8-bit annuals are available free of charge on their site. Unlike Fusion, there's no famous names in the contributors list, other than one who is now famous for many of the wrong reasons and about whom we shall not talk. It doesn't harm it though. The 8-bit annual is packed with feature content, as diverse as playing games in Teslas, writing games in 10 lines of code, and spotlights on collectors of CPC games and hardware. There's a pleasing number of reviews of new games for old systems, and I'm glad to see they don't shy away from awarding low scores where justified. If an idea doesn't work, it doesn't work as much as we all love seeing new C64 games in 2020. Organising the reviews by system is also a nice touch. Highlight for me is the stunning Pinball Dreams conversion for the CPC by the Batman Group, which can only have been achieved by some sort of turbo witchcraft. The magazine is probably worth tracking down if you're interested, judging by this annual, but do get those annuals while you can. The 2019 edition is a full 220 pages, and the 2020 edition coming soon will also feature content for the 16 and 32-bit systems. Hopefully that doesn't dilute what they're doing here, but it's all very promising. That decision is probably driven by their new thing. Currently on Kickstarter is the first issue of their new expanded venture retro format, which is available digitally on the lowest tier. It's probably worth you taking a look, and as always, I'll link it below. Another one without digital, 364 has been running for a few years now, and concentrates exclusively on the C64. I didn't buy a print issue of this for two reasons. One, they restrict some of them to subscribers only, which seems a little obtuse and also that they have a big notice saying they refuse to help you if your order never reaches you, which, I'm sorry chaps, is not how ordering things works. It does have a good reputation for its actual content though, albeit at 36 pages it's not a big magazine. If you want a C64 specific magazine, I believe it's currently your only option. Stretching the inclusion requirements a little here, Amiga Future is a German publication, but they do produce an English language version, and shipping to the UK seems reasonable. A proper production this, AF has been running for 22 years. In fact, it's old enough that at one point it technically competed against Amiga format from Future. It's a professional publication that even still has a cover CD if you want it. Probably the only one left in any 2020 magazine. Again, they don't really do digital, which continues to baffle me since it's so easy and is basically free money. AF is bi-monthly, and up to 146 at this point. They do sell digital issues for those that are out of stock in paper, the most recent of those being at the start of 2018, which I decided against buying for two different reasons to Freeze 64. The first being that I didn't think a two-year-old one would tell as much about today's offerings, and secondly that it demanded an address, phone number, and most astonishingly my date of birth in order to buy a PDF. If you still own an Amiga, their longevity suggests it's probably worth a punt. Although again, I'd like to see digital available day and date. We all love paper magazines. I subscribe to four of them. But it's almost obtuse to demand that's the only option in this day and age. Retro Magazine gets this. A long time Italian publication has just started experimenting with a world edition in English. And both issues 0 and 1 are available to download free on their site. There's minor and understandable translation issues on occasion and I'm not going through it critically, because it seems fair to let them settle down first. Go get yourself the first two editions on their site, and enjoy features that span the full gamut from a basic compiler in CPM to re-reviewing Sonic the Hedgehog in terms of popular appeal. Pixel Bison Our last full look is a new one, Pixel Bison winner of Magazine Name of the Year 2020. At the time of writing, Pixel Bison have released their first issue, and their remit is all of gaming, from new AAA games to indies and retro, but concentrates mostly on those independently produced new games. The magazine starts how it means to go on, with an interview with Rurki Debs, Alex and Tom about starting an indie studio when Sony killed their major one. The game, an adventure and world explorer, is looking fine and coming soon to PC and Switch. In the larger game world, Andrew clearly has contacts at Lionhead and starts a series of interviews with those involved with the ill-fated Bullfrog successor, with their social media coordinator, a job you don't often see in magazines. 
The last interview is with John Roo, writer of new Game Boy release Quest Arrest, which is a curious case of trying to create the style of the old Sierra adventure game Police Quest, using graphics that look like they were borrowed from Pokemon. What he's come out with is a unique looking game you can get in both physical and digital form, and I wouldn't have known about it without this magazine. There's previews and reviews of new indie games, notable for not awarding a score, but instead making you actually read the review, something you'd probably need to be an indie mag to get away with. Finally, there's new games content, with a roundup of Xbox Series X announcements. It's probably the weakest part of the magazine, as it's just a list rather than any of the author's actual feelings on what might be promising. It's hard to see what added value there is here. You soon forget that in the back of the magazine, as many people come together to discuss over several features what retro gaming means to them. And finally, the magazine concludes its 46-page run with an advert for Quest Arrest. Pixel Bison is £3 for a digital copy, £5 for physical. If you want to catch up, consider their new Kickstarter to fund issue 3. For £8, you can get digital copies of all three issues to that point. Again, we'll link. Retro Bison is a much more personal project than probably anything else we've seen. It's largely written by one man, Andrew McMaster, and very much feels imprinted with a singular vision almost to the point of seeming like a digest of someone's blog at times. That's not a criticism. Andrew's a good writer with a breadth of knowledge. For a title focused on indie games, it feels right that it's written in something of an indie way. Andrew was kind enough to join us to talk about producing issue one of Pixel Bison and how he sees its future. We asked him to do an impression of James O'Grady for the entire interview, and we think he did an excellent job of that. What do you see as being special and interesting about a print gaming magazine in 2020? A physical printed game magazine in itself is special to me. I grew up in the golden age of game magazines, and, like many people at the time, I had the issue of not being able to buy every single one of them every month. I definitely would consider it an art form. It's much more than just reviewing games, getting some exclusive content and pretty images. In 2020, we rely a lot on digital. The time is perfect to reintroduce some physical game magazines which can include posters and other freebies to really get the word out about a particular game or studio. If we look after them, physical print magazines can last a very long time and outlive digital content that comes and goes. Are there any special challenges trying to launch a new print magazine into this environment? The main challenges of launching a new print magazine come down to time and knowledge of publishing software. I set myself a launch date of launching issue 1 in early June. When I started this journey, at the end of April, I didn't know how to use publishing software, or even which one to use. I settled on one which fit my budget, and came with some powerful features. There was no time to learn everything while also getting the content needed, setting up the website and everything else, so I learned by just doing. Finding a printer that could print to the quality I wanted, at the speed I wanted, and within budget was also a challenge. I didn't have time to research this before starting to design the magazine, but luckily, by the second week in May, I had settled on a printer that ticked all the boxes. Getting the word out about Pixel Bison, and indeed any business in 2020, is not an easy process. As the editor, designer, content writer, and everything else in between, I was wearing enough hats, and marketing was mainly focused to Twitter. Is there a games magazine other than Pixel Bison that you read or subscribe to? I enjoy Retro Gamer and Free64. There is something about the nostalgia that I really like. Free64 focuses on the Commodore 64. I had one growing up, and have many fond memories of this system. What was your favourite game magazine from the Golden Age? There were just so many, and I did buy quite a few different ones. The one I returned to, however, over and over was Games Master. They had many special issues that came wrapped with magazines, cheat books and other freebies that filled me with joy. I have a number to this day. Why should we buy Pixel Bison? The first issue is now available at pixelbison.com. 
The first of many, I hope. I have big plans for the magazine going forward. We are into collectibles, and if you're like me, I like to preserve my magazines and games. To that end, I have plans to make available A5 folders so you can house the Pixel Bison magazine collection safely. Pixel Bison has a focus on indie games, but also covers AAA, retro and news. As the months pass, I have plans to expand the content and employ members for the, the team. Each month I'll be working hard to create and obtain gaming content and secure some freebie items, just like the good old days. And I think that is all of them. But do you know another? Remember the rules, published on a regular schedule, mostly about games, available in paper form and published in the UK. Although, if you know of one like Amiga Future that misses that last one but is available at a reasonable price on import, do let me know. I'd like to tip my hat to Take Deep Shh, a commentator on episode 1 of this series, without whom I would not have known about Amiga Future. We'll be back in next year most likely, when hopefully all our magazines are still going. And who knows, maybe we'll have something new to join them. Good reading! Music